What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to a, just a quick edition of Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every day. Uh, we got Ross Uglum on the jo- on the show joining us. Ross Uglum, uh, Bison Report publisher, also um, Packer Report publisher. He does a lot of other things as well. Really in tune with sports. Um, AJ Blazik. By the way, is it Blazik or Blazik? Blazik. Blazik. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. AJ Blazik was hired today as the offensive line coach for Madison. And I noticed a tweet you put up, Ross, and I want to throw it up here on the screen. Badger fans are getting an absolute prince. Blaz is the best. Uh, that's obviously from you. Tell us why this is such a good hire for Wisconsin. Well, he, he knows what he's doing, you know, um, and I think that's kind of the the basic competency for any coach is just he, he's a very good offensive line coach. Uh, Wisconsin has been a pillar, man, of, of, of producing excellent offensive linemen, Joe Thomas, Mark Tosher. I mean, you could just go on and on down the line of, of, of really, really good pros, Seitler from, from Wisconsin. And that's sort of dried up a little. I think like the last three draft classes haven't produced a super great Wisconsin offensive lineman, which has been uh, kind of odd. And, and Blas has done that, man. Uh, when he's at Rutgers, Jonah Jackson, who eventually went to Ohio state and then, um, is, is, is basically an all pro level guard or a pro bowl level guard for the Detroit lions right now. Then you look at his time at North Dakota state, uh, Cordell Volson's with the Bengals, uh, Dylan Radins is with the Tennessee Titans, Cody Mock, a second round pick of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, he was a huge part in, in, in the development of all three of those guys. And uh, I, I know from a wins and losses perspective, and maybe even like if you're hiring an offensive line coach, you might look at like rushing yards as, as sort of, okay, how, how good did he do his job? Vanderbilt's a tough place to win, man, but but you're getting um, a, a worthy technician, but at the same time, a player's coach. And and that's that's big for me on the position coach side. I think sometimes the head man can be sort of a CEO, um, though there are certainly, you know, headers in college football that are great players, coaches. But you get down to past the coordinator level and to the position coach level, especially um, a, a position like offensive line where there's such a brotherhood he's just a great guy and, and his players love him and, 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 and guys continue to stay in touch with him after they've been coached by him. And, and I just think when you see stuff like that, like that's, that's the kind of kid, if, if I'm making a decision, whether in the transfer portal or whether I'm a high school senior, um, he's the type of offensive coach, offensive line coach I want to play for. Yeah. Obviously you cover the bison um, where yeah. he was, he was at for a while. What can you tell us a little bit more about his connection to those players, his his impact on that program while he was there? I mean, he had a huge impact on that program. He was uh, hired. Connor Riley, who's actually now the offensive coordinator at Kansas State, uh, was the offensive line coach for Chris Kleiman. And then in 2018, Chris got hired to take the Kansas State job and, and brought Connor with him. Uh, at the time, it was kind of a crazy move because A.J. Blazek left Rutgers, his Big Ten job, um, for the offensive line job at North Dakota State. and you know, he's kind of talked about some of the reasons that he, that he did that. He and Coach Entz are friends. Matt Entz now um, has has taken a uh, assistant head coach linebacker's position with USC. So he's kind of moving on up as well. But Blas stepped into a tough spot because Connor was a, a high-end developer, a developer of talent. Um, North Dakota State is kind of the Wisconsin of the FCS when you talk about uh, developing offensive line talent for the pros. I mean, it goes before that. Billy Turner, who played with the Green Bay Packers, Wisconsin fans will remember well. Um, Joe Hag was a 10, 11, 12-year vet. I think just in, in my time covering the team, they've sent five or six guys to the league just from the offensive line room. There's a proud tradition, and people know what Bison football is, even if you're just a casual that sort of checks in on them during the FCS title game. What do you see? you know, 350 rushing yards, you know, that's what you see is, is the Rams moving people and the Rams being the, I should, so the team's name is the Bison, but the offensive line room is the Rams. That's, that's the, the, the moniker for the O-line and, and you see the Rams moving people. And and he was a big, big part of that. And and honestly, wasn't there that long, but made a tremendous impact, uh, was there for, you know, one full season. And then was the offensive line coach for the fall of 2020, where NDSU only played one game. Uh, as the FCS season basically got moved to the spring. And um, during that spring, Blas took the Wyoming job in the offensive line. And then, boom, like two weeks later, took the Vanderbilt job. Uh, never actually, I don't even think, stepped on, uh, stepped foot in in Laramie uh, when, when his friend got the Vanderbilt job. And, and uh, just even in that kind of year and a half, has, has absolutely left a mark on, on Fargo. And as I mentioned, um, you know, guys love him. I, I 
got got former players on the offensive line that that produce content for us at Bison Report and like he and a couple of buddies went to Nashville on their own dime just to see Boz and watch Vanderbilt play knowing that they probably weren't going to see a win but just like that's my guy and and I think that's kind of the again the type of coach you want your players playing for and and that's sort of on the personal side but truly the um X's and O side and the player development side. I mean, there are examples after examples of him taking talent um, that that was not four or five stars coming out of of, of high school and and making them an NFL caliber offensive lineman. And I, I know Wisconsin certainly recruits in a different stratosphere than North Dakota State, but they're still not you know in the top twenty five every year. Like there there are not four and five star offensive linemen walking through that door. Um, you know, every week at, at Wisconsin or every recruiting class, they might get, you know, one or two, but he's going to take, you know, s- some guy from Chippewa Falls or from, you know, who, who else, who knows where, and, and uh, going to be somebody that's, you know, six foot six, 240 pounds, going to get him in the weight room, going to get the, uh, the, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and the chocolate milk and the protein shakes. And we're going to, we're going to coach him up, baby. And that's, that's Blas. He's, uh, he's, a, he's a heck of a, a heck of a, that, that would be the number one thing. And I'm, I'm kind of rambling, but the number one thing for me is player development, taking them from where they are when they're 18. And by the time they're 21, I think they'll all be pretty darn good Big Ten offensive linemen. No, that's awesome. And you're, you're not rambling. You're intelligently talking about a lot of different things, <laughs> yeah. seconds, which is great because we're getting insight here. We couldn't get anywhere else. So I appreciate sure. it. Uh, two more quick questions. Yeah. The first one is, we talked about development. We talked about evaluation. We talked about being a good guy. How do you think as a recruiter though, he will do in the big 10 at Wisconsin? I, 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 that kind of goes back to the big guy, uh, uh, or excuse me, the good guy stuff. Like Blas, he could sell ice cream to Eskimos, man. Like he, he, whatever. And, and there are ties, right? I mean, um, he certainly recruited like North Dakota state football, for the last 10 years has been built on either recruiting misses by the Badgers and Gophers, or frankly, just players that are like just below that level Mm -hmm. where the Badgers don't offer, whether they should have gone there or not. Like I'm sure there are guys that was like Hunter Lipke. I'm sure Wisconsin wishes they took Hunter Lipke. I'm sure there are, and there Mm -hmm. are tons of of examples like that, but he has been recruiting without, because they, there is no, there are no FCS programs there. Well, there is one non-scholarship one now in St. Paul in St. Thomas, but for the longest time, if you weren't a Badger or a Gopher, um, you had played division two ball or, or even lower. I don't even think there's a division two program in Wisconsin. So you have to go play for like Whitewater or, or Platteville or, you know, kind of whatever. So that level of kid that was like right on the border, um, they, they, they went and got those guys to play offensive line all the time. Farm kids, you know, upper Midwest strong. Uh, I, I know he's, co- he's he's recruited the Chicagoland area, um, but but he just he has upper Midwest ties from his kind of humble beginnings. I think he was part of a, the Winona State or he's been kind of in the Division Two Northern Sun Conference area before he was in the Western Illinois, which Western Illinois is Missouri Valley. Um, and, and that's, again upper Midwest kids that aren't quite getting a big 10 offer. So he knows those high school coaches. Um, he knows who he needs to know in, in Wisconsin's neck of the woods. Uh, certainly his time at North Dakota state didn't hurt that. Um, I don't know that he's necessarily recruiting this area a ton when he was at Vanderbilt, but that doesn't change the time that he spent in the MVFC and the time that he spent in the MVFC, while it might not be the same level of recruiting, you're still making the same connections because you're asking the same high school coaches and, yeah, if that kid has four stars on him, okay, well, we're not probably recruiting him at North Dakota State or we're not probably recruiting him at Western Illinois or wherever. But you're telling me about two or three other kids that you think might have a chance. And, again, he's just a good person and somebody that I would send into living rooms all across the upper Midwest and expect him to be able to to close recruits. That's awesome. Uh, let me let me end on this one question. This was the one concern that I, I maybe saw or I saw some people throw out there. Yeah, he is. a So Wisconsin, for those who maybe haven't followed as much, has gone through four offensive line coaches in the last four years. Um, this is a coach in in AJ that has been at a few spots, right? Vanderbilt for a couple of years prior to that, North Dakota State for a couple of years prior to that, Rutgers for a couple of years. Do you feel like he's the type of guy that wants to be in a spot for a while or 
is that difficult for him, do you think? And I, I, I know it's putting you on the spot, but. Yeah, I, I get the question, though. I, I, I do. And, I mean, you know, Blas and I are friendly. Like, we used to play golf together. So, it's, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I texted him congratulations. And, and I get where that's coming from. Um, but I just think he, he wants what's best for his family. I don't think he necessarily, uh, you know, he played at Iowa. Um, he's, he's an upper Midwest guy. I think this is an opportunity. And, and, and truthfully, um, you know, outside of Iowa, I don't know if there's a higher profile offensive line job, maybe, maybe Alabama. I don't, I mean, when you're talking about just the history of the actual position group, um, you know, I was right there. Wisconsin's right there. When you talk about Hall of Famers, Pro Bowlers, Travis Frederick, right? And and, and, and and like going on and on about just who produces dudes like there are maybe no salary wise. Sure. I'm sure there are better jobs with more, you know, programs with more money, whatever, whatever. But you just talk about like pedigree. You talk about, OK, where do I want to be the offensive line coach? Wisconsin's really high up there. He's going to be close to family. He's going to be close to friends. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's always a chance with an offensive line coach. Maybe he wants a coordinator job someday. Maybe he wants to be a head coach someday. Um, I, I could see kind of stuff like that. But as far as just expecting him to like do really well and move on, I don't, I don't see that. I, 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 I get like Vanderbilt was a tough place to pull, to, to win. And um, that kind of losing can grade on people. And I'm not necessarily blaming him a ton. Like it's a high academic institution in a league with just the best athletes in the country. You're talking about blocking Devontae White. You're talking about blocking right, Jordan yeah. Davis. You're talking yeah. about blocking Jalen Carter. And, and that's only I'm only mentioning one school. I'm not even, I'm not even getting into Bama. I'm not getting into Tennessee. I'm not getting into, you know, uh, Florida. LSU. Right. Yeah you know, Mason Smith at LSU, like I, it's, that was a great step up for him. Um, you know, North Dakota state is unquestionably the cream of the crop at the FCS level, but they're still as of right now at the FCS level, then Wyoming would be okay. That's my first G five job. Oh, I got to pass the line and I got to go right into the power four. Well, now he's, now he's still in the power four, but he's in his roots. And where I think like, I, I, again, if he does a bang up job and somebody offers him a power four coordinator position, sure. But I just don't know what offensive line job other than he is an Iowa alum. I mean, I, I would say just, I don't know, maybe pay attention to that. But um, other than like Iowa, I don't know what offensive line job he's leaving for. So uh, I, I think, you know, for sure, I, I would just say that, you know, I wouldn't make any promises. I, I think he, I think he wants to be there. Obviously he wants to be there. He wouldn't have accepted the job, but I, I would not kind of view him as this sort of transient coach. That's just always looking for the next paycheck. I think he, he saw his opportunity after some real success at North Dakota state. And then, you know, took that opportunity to go to the sec and it's very, very hard to blame him. And now I just think probably going to work, work for coach Vic and, and going to a place where um, I think winning's probably more on the table than it was at Vanderbilt. And, you know, it's, it's still, Wisconsin's still a very good academic institution. Like he's going to have to recruit kids that go to class <laughs> and kids that excel academically, but it's, it's not the same kind of uphill climb. Like we've seen Wisconsin in the big 10 title game. We like, we know that that can happen. Um, getting a lot more interesting with some of the new entrants into the conference, but uh, you know, running the football and playing good defense still wins football games. And I think he's going to help with, you know, one of those things. No, this is awesome. I really, really do appreciate the time, Ross. Where can people find everything you have going on? I, I definitely put your Twitter account on here as well, but anywhere else people can jump. Sure. No, uh, just, you know, we've got things going at Bison Report. You want to check us out. Um, otherwise, I'm guessing the the vast majority of my Lockdown Badgers people want to check out our work over at Packer Report. Um, hoping for a big win uh, so we can kind of keep that content going on Sunday. But after that, we're, we're pretty heavy on draft nerds uh, when it comes to the people that I have myself, um, but the people that I have working for us at Packer Report. So, 
when the off season comes and, and hopefully that's in the middle of February after, you know, uh, a, a Cinderella run, but um, should that not happen, we're going to have some great draft content, um, some great off season content. And, and I would guess, like I said, most of my locked on Badgers folks here are probably more interested in my work at Packer report. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of Packers fans that watch this. No doubt. Go check out his work. Um, thank you so much for the time. We're definitely smarter because you were here and thank you everybody for tuning in. We will talk tomorrow on Wisconsin. Thanks, Ryan.